all right welcome to dental board exam review this is a review for those of you uh, practicing for national boards all right and uh, some of you have already reviewed the lectures okay so this is a a, a quick review of some important uh, points that you're supposed to know okay all right so there's going to be multiple series of the operative. There are going to be a total of a total of 100 questions. So divided into 10 questions in each series with explanations. Okay. All right. So make sure you subscribe, like and share, and also click the bell so that you, whenever a new video is posted, you can you can uh, receive the notification. Okay. All right. So question one on 100, which of the following line angle should be rounded, giving more bulk for amalgam? Okay. Which, when you're doing the preparations, this with class two preparation, which line angle should be rounded, giving more bulk for amalgam? A. Axial purple line angle. B. Cervical gingival line angle. C. Mesio buccal line angle or D. Facial occlusal line angle. Okay, so for most of you who know uh, class class two amalgam preparation, you know that you're supposed to round the axial purple line angle. Okay, all right. So if you chose axial purple line angle, you are correct. All right, so our answer is A. All right, so uh, it should, so the axial purple line angle should be rounded to give more bulk for amalgam so that it doesn't fracture, okay? Amalgam does not work well with sharp angles. So you have to know that, all right? So the, the sharp internal angles can put stress on amalgam and fracture the restoration all right all right so question two which of the following is a protective factor from caries a use of fluoridated toothpaste daily b adequate saliva flow more than 1 ml per minute or C use of xylitol containing gums D mother or caregiver has no caries E or the above okay so all these make sense all right all these make sense so adequate saliva flow more than 1 milli, one, one uh, milliliter per minute that's very good Okay, if you use uh, fluoridated toothpaste, that's great. The, the xylitol, now the xylitol um, containing gums. Remember, this xylitol is a is a is a is a and 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 carries. Okay, because even even if the 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 the, the bacteria internalize the xylitol, they are not able to break it down, so they end up actually not able to divide. So xylitol containing gums are very protective, and if the mother doesn't have cavities, because mothers, you know, you're always feeding the baby, transferring the the cariogenic bacteria. So if there's no caries, then the baby is at low risk also. So all the above makes sense. So our answer should be E. All right. So E is our answer. Question three. Which of the following cements has anticaryogenic activity? So now you have to know about cements. You can't, you can't be practicing uh, restorative dentistry, operative dentistry, or, uh, or prostodontics without knowing the cements uh, properties. All right. So which of the following cements has anticaryogenic activities? All right. A. Glass ionoma. B. Resin modified glass ionoma, 
or C, zinc phosphate cement. All right. So you have to know which ones are more cario uh, 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 anti-cariogenic. So that's why anomas are great. Okay, that's why you, you put them on uh, on the on the cervical uh, lesions. All right. So A and B are both correct. So our answer is going to be D. All right. D is our final answer. If you have questions about this, please uh, feel free to comment. Or make sure you you can you can also email email uh, and ask the questions. Okay. Let's look at uh, question four. Now this this usually people get um, surprised by because they've never heard the term the term. Uh, however, what is metamerism? Okay. Is it a when two colored sam uh, samples appear to match under one condition but not the uh, under the other condition? Or is it B, when two colored samples appear to match under all different conditions? Okay. So you have to know about metamerism. So this is, the answer is A. All right. So what's the definition of metamerism? Metamerism occurs when two colored samples appear to match under one condition but not under another condition so you may you may you may pick a restorative color okay you may pick a restorative uh, color under a different light and then when you go the patient is outside you realize they realize that oh actually the the, the feeling does not match the the rest of the the teeth color okay that's because of metamerism. So you may have uh, mismatch thinking it everything matches because you are looking at a different light. Okay. So whenever you are choosing a color, make sure you are uh, by the window or under very good lighting. All right. So question number seven. Which of the following is correct about zinc oxide eugenol so you can uh, make sure you know all the properties of zinc uh, oxide eugenol okay so is it a they provide a seal does zinc oxide eugenol provide a seal or is it b have a palliative effect yes eugenol has a palliative uh, palliative effect okay and does it provide thermal insulation uh is it not easy to remove from the cavity all right so all the above are correct all right it does provide a seal and it, for sure when you do sedative feelings that's what you use all right with irm and provide thermal insulation yes it does and it's not easy to remove uh, from a cavity okay so all the above are correct all right all right so moving on this is a uh, moving on to the next question where most people usually uh, struggle okay oh let's see so question number nine all right all right so in terms of the instruments which are being used so different instruments have different chord numbers all right so you have to know what these chord numbers mean all right so for a three number instrument chord such as 10-7-14 which of the following statement is correct a 7 represents length of the blade in millimeters b 10 represents angle of blade in centigrade or c 14 represents width of blade in tenth of millimeter 
okay so which one is correct so you have to make sure you know this okay so here is the answer is a all right so our answer here is a seven is the length of the blade in millimeters okay and uh, let's look at it so so you, you can see the length of blade in millimeters here okay so the first so in the three numbers the three number formula okay first is the width of the blade in tenth tenth of millimeter all right this one here the width of blade okay and then the second is the length of blade so the seven here and the third is the blade angle okay the blade angle in centigrade all right and for the four number formula okay the first number the first number for example the 13 here is the width of blade in tenth of millimeter and the second number okay is the cutting edge angle so the second number is the angle and the third number is the length of blade okay so this blade here is the length is eight that's the third number and the fourth number is the angle the blade angle in centigrade so the last number is usually the blade angle okay the, it doesn't matter the, the formula in the three in the three number formula and the four number formula the last number is the blade angle in centigrade okay and the first number is the width of blade in tenth of millimeter the first number is the width of blade in tenth of millimeter and then the differences is when you have four numbers and three numbers is going to be the primary cutting edge okay comes first in the in the four number uh, formula okay so keep that in mind practice these questions are easy these are free points all right but you're supposed to know them all right so question 10 cast god restoration so you have to know the preparation for cast god okay so cast god restorations require dash millimeter of thickness over the shearing cusp and dash millimeter of thickness over the stamp cusp so now you have to know that the shearing cusps are non functional cusp okay and these are func the stamp cusp are functional cusps okay so when you're doing the, the preparation, what are the, the, the millimeters for the reductions? Okay, that's required. Is it A, one millimeter on the shearing cusp and 1.5 millimeter on the stamp cusp? Or is it 1.5 millimeter on the shearing and 1, 1, 1 millimeter on the stamp? Or 0.5 millimeter on the shearing cusp? or one millimeter and one millimeter on the stamp cusp or is it 1.5 on millimeter on the sharing cusp and two millimeter reduction on the stamp cusp okay so the 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 general rule is a okay so a is our answer so our answer is a all right so <clears throat> make sure you know the measurements for uh, God crown okay so you have to know the, the occlusal reductions for God crown all right that you are supposed to have one millimeter reduction on the shearing cast on non-functional cast so if you are preparing a, a maxillary tooth 
the one millimeter is going to be reduced on the buckle cusp and 1.5 millimeter removal on the lingual cusp because the lingual cusp are the functional cusps in the maxilla okay all right so this is the period review number one all right so coming next is going to be operative dentistry review series number two so make sure you subscribe like and share and as i mentioned at the beginning of this video for those of you who who are taking the courses and you you want to my courses and you want to 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 receive notifications for these practice questions okay make sure you click the bell to receive new not uh, new video notifications okay all right good luck